I am the dreamer. And I always will be. I mean, everybody needs a big dream, right? But what exactly is a big dream? Let's talk about my big dream. As a child, I always dreamed of being the biggest pop star in the whole world. And it worked. With Ed Sheeran, not me. <laughs> and here comes the truth. My dream is childish and maybe even unattainable. Aim high, dream big. That's what all the acting coaches from Los Angeles or New York told me. And I followed their advice. So then, it was also an Oscar I was supposed to win. And it worked with so many others, but not me. But I worked as hard as I could to chase my dream. I released my first solo album, played over 500 concerts, and appeared in over 20 movies and soap operas. And that with the age of 20. Taking an objective look, I would suppose that it's quite a career for a 20 year old. But back then, it was far from enough for me. You know, I couldn't see all the achievements and my success because I always thought about my big dream. So nothing was enough. Being played in German radio stations with your own music, not enough. Playing a role in Germany's most famous crime series, not enough. And standing in front of a 50,000 people audience, not enough. Two years ago, I woke up and was deaf on my left ear. I thought my career is over. Well, luckily, it was just a sudden hearing loss, and now I hear perfectly fine. But that was my final wake-up call. And I finally realized that I got lost in my dream. And looking back now, everything was kind of worthless because I was not happy the whole time. You know, in German we have the saying, der Weg ist das Ziel, which means that your path is the goal, and maybe even the destination. But I wasn't able to see this destination because I always wanted to aim higher, further, faster. And from that moment on, where I had this Beethoven experience in my ear, I no longer live in the world of dreams, but in the world called reality. And that's great because I experience every step I make, good or bad. I really enjoy my artist life and I love my life. I wanted to start my TED talk with an experience that changed my life. And it was my sudden hearing loss because not only was I confronted with reality, I also had to handle reality. And handling reality made me become a worker. I work now. I'm trying to get the best out of me. Well, I'm not getting best right away, but step by step. And even as an artist, this makes total sense. <coughs> now it's getting funny. Handling reality. Step by step. Down to earth attitude. So wait, which industry was I working in again? The thing is that creativity can be dangerous. Dangerous because you can lose yourself in creativity. And that's what I did before I had a sudden hearing loss. I was just being creative but without a plan. And to be honest, being the next at Sheeran is probably not the best plan. Being the best Paul is the best version of myself. So we should start looking at our lives. But for that, here comes the bigger picture. You need focus. For almost everything in life, but especially in creativity. Because creativity is a jungle. And in the jungle, you need to know where you are. Otherwise, you have a problem. So, what if creativity needs Focus. I would love to let you enter my world in the next few minutes, understand the life of a songwriter, a music producer, and my most important ingredient, creativity. And as I just told you, creativity needs focus. 
So I will illustrate the importance of focus with three examples for my work. Starting with first focus regarding choices, second focus to survive in the music industry, and third focus within the songwriting process. Let's talk about focus regarding choices. In order to answer this question, I would like to take you back to the year 2018 and exactly this moment. Three very emotionalized men can be seen because they just played their last concert after 10 years of successful band history. And that's because the person in the middle wanted to break up, which was probably the most difficult decision in his life. Next to the band life, which mostly took place on the weekends, I went to school. And about the same time my acting career journey started, my band journey started. Like I said in the beginning, I felt like being the next Ed Sheeran and Leonardo DiCaprio at the same time. My master disaster plan. And next to my band career, which went amazing, I achieved almost nothing with all my other careers because I did not have a focus. And with achieving, I do not mean earning money because that went well. With achieving something, I mean seeing and feeling the steps you make in your career and being happy with them. Believe me, playing just a dead guy lying on the floor the whole day in Germany's most famous crime series, you get a lot of money for that. But what I completely forgot is that I was not only playing a dead guy, I was also treated like a dead guy. And that's because my focus was not my acting career. But people didn't see me as an actor. They saw me as the guy trying to be an actor, a band member, and a solo artist at the same time. And that's just not possible, or really, really seldom, at a larger stage in your career. You know, all the creativity processes that go along with being an actor, a band member, a musician, were not fulfilling because they were not target-oriented. And with the increasing success of our band, I've noticed that it does not satisfy me because it didn't help me with my career. And getting more and more acting jobs, I realized that being a dead guy is not the thing I want to do my whole life. Realizing this had a bitter taste and led me to the decision to leave the band and quit my acting career one year later. I'm telling you now that the guy on the left is my father and mentor, Dieter. And the guy on the right, my beloved brother, Max. I'm telling you that without the band, we wouldn't have grown into such a strong and harmonious family. Maybe you understand how difficult and emotional my decision was. Well, for over two years now, I focused my work being a music producer and songwriter, and I'm really happy about it. So how did this focus on my career help me be more creative? Well, let's frame it that way, more efficient in being creative. Let's talk about focus to survive in the music industry. Let's dive into a typical creativity process in my life, which is writing and producing a pop song. But where do we start? And there it is again, the F word, focus. What did you thought? Because writing a pop song starts with focus. And the focus is the structure of a song. Because in modern pop music or mainstream, nothing is and should be new. That means the topic of the lyrics you come up with happened before a thousand times. The chord sequence you come up with happened before a thousand times. And the way the song sounds later happened before a thousand times. So now everybody's asking, why not doing something completely new? Well, because the human being is a creature of habit. This does not mean that we cannot write something new, and there comes the no, because we have to come up with a new melody in our own story, and that's the creative part. We should have fun, let off steam. Maybe even think outside the box for a moment or two. 
But all this based on a structure that's well known. And the more famous the structures we work on, the more mainstream is our product. Well, the music market, like almost every other business, has become so fast moving that it has become the rule to get there as fast as possible. This means that usually you finish a song and demo production on one day. And if I tell you now that as a songwriter, you get approximately something between 0.002 and 0.008 cents, for a Spotify stream, you know why I'm working on efficiency. But for that, I need a team. More specific, a songwriting team. So let's talk about focus within a songwriting process. I usually work with a team of three people and every person has a role and area for which he or she is responsible. The first person focuses more on creating and producing a song, that's mostly me. The second person focuses more on the lyrics, and the third person is completing the team by focusing more on the melody. As you just heard, I used the word focus again, because by having three people in a team, you reach your goal of a finished song much faster without losing quality. Of course, you have to get along with the people you write or work with. Often people I write or work with are friends, because being creative is only possible in a safe environment. And nevertheless, you have to deal with pressure. But I found out that pressure can be a really good thing. Isn't that strange? But let's be honest. Pressure forces us to work goal-oriented and hard. Pressure makes us nervous. And a certain basic nervousness makes us understand the importance of a thing. And pressure demands focus. What should I finish first? What is more important and what not? That's why we have to deal with pressure, because pressure is everywhere in the world of work. Sometimes more, sometimes less. I think that I have the right to talk about pressure, because having a sudden hearing loss I realized what too much pressure can do with you. And the problem was that I put too much pressure on myself. And that's bad pressure and something you can change. The other type of pressure is pressure you get from the outside. And that will always happen if you work hard and try to be successful. So I can highly recommend that you don't put too much pressure on yourself. Try to work with the pressure you get from the outside. Now that I gave you three examples from my work where focus is absolute relevant, I want to round up my talk by telling you what happened by having focus on the three areas I just mentioned. It might sound strange in the first, but let me tell you how focus opened doors for me. Interesting is that I never really wanted to write in teams because I wanted to do everything by myself. Everything. My creativity process was the holy grail. And I only wanted to write pop music and music that I feel. But with this attitude, guys, you don't get far. So I decided to be more open. And not only have so many great things happened with this decision, but I have found out that music is my job and profession now and not a hobby anymore. And that's the edge between fun and work. Because in a profession, you have to work goal-oriented and hard to be successful. In a profession, you need a lot of people around you to help you get there faster and better. Well, that's the typical networking everybody's talking about. And in a profession, you often have to do things you don't want to do. And the funny thing is that my most successful song until now is a German Schlager song. Schlager is the very catchy, happy-go-lucky music we and in Germany, very popular. And to be honest, not my cup of tea. Be that as it may, but if I hadn't changed my attitude, I wouldn't have a successful song right now. And most of my music productions wouldn't exist. Of course, 
You have to be able to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. But what the most people forget, the mirror has to be bought first. And that's why my career started to get serious, because at the end of the month, you should be able to make a living off your job, dream job or not. And that's something you tend to forget if you are creative. And that's why creativity needs focus. Well, the first door that opened up to me was Schlager. But it was not the only door. Another door is called production music, an increasingly important model in the music industry. Production music is the kind of music you hear when you see a TV spot play a game, and also more and more the music you hear when you see a Netflix or Amazon Prime production. Interesting is that you can write and produce songs and do not depend on the artist's fame, because the music is selected whether it fits to the medium or not, whether it's good or not. And that's actually what music should be all about anyway. What if creativity needs focus? Looking back now, I have dealt with my career, my profession, my mistakes, and my most important ingredient, creativity, in a completely different way. I found out that my life before my sudden hearing loss was non-fulfilling. Working on three careers, an actor, a band member, a solo artist, non-fulfilling. All the creativity processes, non-fulfilling. And all the success, non-fulfilling. Now, my life is fulfilling again. And that's just because life, and my life is creativity, needed focus. Thank you very much.